When I heard the stories that I'm about to share with you, I did not believe them. On this video, I'm gonna break down three of the craziest plane crash survival stories I've ever heard and that, frankly, I think exist out there. If you enjoy these videos, please drop a like and subscribe and share this with your friend that can't stop listening to the Morbid Podcast. Seriously, they started last month and they're already caught up on all 525 episodes. They need a break and they need to watch this video. The first one is a woman named Vesna Vojevic. She was a Serbian flight attendant who survived the highest fall without a parachute to date, 6.31 miles or 33,330 feet. She was the sole survivor after an explosion tore through the baggage compartment of JAT flight 367 on January 26th, 1972, causing it to crash. She was actually not scheduled to be on this flight at all, and JAT had confused her with another flight attendant also named Vesna. Nevertheless, Vujovic said that she was excited to travel to Denmark because it was her first time ever visiting the country. After the crash, Vesna was discovered by villager Bruno Honk, who heard her screaming amid the wreckage. Her turquoise uniform was covered in blood and her stiletto heels had been torn off by the force of the impact. Honk had been a medic during World War II and was able to keep her alive until rescuers arrived. Air safety investigators attributed Vujovic's survival to her being trapped by a food trolley in the DC-9's fuselage as it broke away from the rest of the aircraft and plummeted towards the ground. When the cabin depressurized, the passengers and other flight crew were blown out of the aircraft and fell to their deaths. Investigators believed that the fuselage, with Vujovic pinned inside, landed at an angle in a heavily wooded and snow-covered mountainside, which cushioned the impact. An unexpected factor may have contributed as well. Vesna had a history of low blood sugar, which should have prevented her from becoming a flight attendant at all, but Vesna purposefully drank an excessive amount of coffee before her physical examination and was accepted. Physicians concluded that her condition caused her to pass out quickly after the cabin depressurized and kept her heart from bursting on impact. Air safety investigators attributed the explosion to a briefcase bomb. No person or group ever took responsibility for the attack. Following the bombing, Vujovic spent days in a coma and was hospitalized for several months. She suffered a fractured skull, three broken vertebrae, broken legs, broken ribs, and a fractured pelvis. These injuries resulted in her being temporarily paralyzed from the waist down. Vujovic made an almost complete recovery, but continued to walk with a limp. She had no memory of the incident at all. The last thing that Vujovic could remember from before the crash was greeting passengers as they boarded. The next thing she remembered was seeing her parents in the hospital room about one month later. In total, she spent 16 months recuperating and in 2008, she recounted, nobody ever expected me to live this long. Vujovic attributed her recovery to her Serbian stubbornness and a childhood diet that included chocolate, spinach, and fish oil. Upon recovery, Vesna actually hoped to get back to work as a flight attendant. Instead, JAT gave her a desk job negotiating freight contracts, feeling that her presence on flights would actually attract too much publicity. Vujovic became a celebrity in Yugoslavia and was deemed a national hero. She lived to be 66 years old and died in her apartment in Belgrade. So if surviving a six mile fall isn't crazy enough, let's jump into the next one. On June 30th, 2009, Bahia Bakari and her mother Aziza boarded flight 626 from Paris, France to Comoros. As it descended for its approach, around 1 a.m. local time, the jet plunged into the ocean nine miles north of the coastline of Grand Comori Island, breaking apart as it hit the water. Bakari was ejected from the plane as it crashed and found herself floating alone outside amid debris. Investigators would later determine that the cause of the accident was pilot error due to the approach being unstabilized and the flight crew's inappropriate responses to the ground proximity and stall warning systems. In the moments before the crash, 12-year-old Bahia grew concerned with the amount of turbulence the craft was experiencing, but because no one else seemed concerned, she tried to ignore it. Then she describes a feeling of electric shock just before the plane broke apart. Bahia said there was a black hole in her memory between that moment and finding herself in the water. She added that she had convinced herself that she was the only passenger on the flight who had fallen into the ocean and that the other passengers and crew had landed safely at their destination. In actuality, Bahia Bakari was the only one of the 153 passengers to survive the crash. She could not swim and did not have a life jacket, but managed to cling onto a piece of wreckage where she waited alone for nine hours before she was rescued by local boaters. As soon as Bakari was sighted, they threw her a life preserver. She released the debris she had been hanging onto to grab it, but she was so exhausted that she was actually pulled away by the water and disappeared from sight. That's when one of the sailors dove into the water to save her. 
He pulled her onto the flotation device and they were both pulled safely aboard the Simicom 2 where she was given dry blankets and a hot drink. She was then rushed to a local hospital and the next day was flown back to Paris on a private French government Falcon 900 jet and was treated for a fractured pelvis and collarbone, burns to her knees, cuts, bruises, and exhaustion. She was reunited with her father and other family members and later informed of her mother's death. In September of 2022, the airline was sued for the passenger plane that crashed in the Indian Ocean in 2009 and ordered to pay damages to the flight's lone survivor and the families of 65 French citizens who died. The company had denied responsibility, but the court ordered Yemenia to pay a total of 225,000 euros, or approximately $237,000, in damages to the survivor, Bahia Bakari, and to the families of the French victims. So at this point, we've got somebody falling over six miles and surviving, and a 12-year-old who clinged to wreckage for nine hours. Let's dive into the third one. On December 24th, 1971, just one day after she graduated, 17-year-old Julianne Kopka and her mother Maria boarded Lanza Flight 508. Maria had wanted Julianne to return to Panguana with her on the 19th or 20th of December in 1971. But Julianne wanted to attend her graduation ceremony in Lima on December 23rd. Maria agreed that they would stay for her graduation and instead they scheduled a flight for Christmas Eve. All flights were booked except for one with Lanza Airlines. Julianne's father and Maria's husband Hans urged them to avoid flying with the airline due to its poor reputation. At this time, Lanza only had one airworthy aircraft and would go out of business completely very shortly. Maria was anxious to get back to Hans and the work they did together in Panguana, so they booked the flight anyway. The plane was struck by lightning mid-flight and began to disintegrate before plummeting to the ground. Julianne awoke to find herself still trapped to her row of seats, falling 10,000 feet into the Amazon rainforest. Julianne would later find out that she was the sole survivor of the flight, but to keep her spirits up during the next 11 days that she was alone in the woods, she convinced herself that there had to be other survivors and was determined to find her mother, who was not in the seat next to her anymore when she had fallen. Her injuries were shockingly minor, but nonetheless devastating to a young girl alone in the woods. She had a severe concussion, a bad cut on her eye, her collarbone was broken, the two bones were now overlapping, and she had deep gashes in her arms and her calves. She had also lost her glasses in the crash, which only compounded the difficult journey she now faced. When she was able to move, Julianne headed for the sound of running water, which she hoped would eventually lead her to civilization. Though her situation felt completely hopeless, the 17-year-old had one advantage. She had been essentially raised in the Amazon by her scientist parents, and there was almost nothing her parents hadn't taught her about the jungle. Throughout her 11-day walk through absolute hell and back, Julianne endured brutal heat during the day and unbearable cold at night, gnawing hunger, swarms of gnats that followed her everywhere, and constant doubts. Along the way, she even discovered another row of seats from the plane that had hit the ground with such force that the people in them were half buried feet up in the dirt. She could hear rescue planes above, but was unable to get their attention. She discovered the wound on the back of her arm was now home to maggots and could do nothing to clean it. The longer her isolation persisted, the more she began to hallucinate that homes on the horizon and voices in the distance that she wanted so desperately to be real. On the 10th day, she discovered an abandoned hut with a fan boat, but no one was there. Inside the hut, she found a can of gasoline that she poured over her wound in an attempt to flush out the maggots. She pulled 30 out with her fingertips. She decided to stay in that hut overnight and awoke to the sound of voices in the morning. But they were real this time and Julianne went outside to see two loggers and she finally said aloud in Spanish, I'm the girl who was in the Lanza crash. My name is Julianne. Many years later, Julianne would return to the site of the crash with filmmaker Werner Herzog, who was actually meant to be in the same flight. Upon hearing her story, Herzog said of the crash, she didn't leave the plane, the plane left her. Today, Julianne splits her time in Munich and works as a librarian at the Bavarian State Collection of Zoology in Piguana, continuing her parents' work studying birds in the Amazon, and she flies all the time. If you know of some crazy airplane survival stories that I didn't include in this list, drop them in the comments and I'll make a part two. Thanks again for watching and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I'll see you next time.